Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is an English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Maulana Qamaru Zamasa Abdamad Barakatuh, which took place on Tuesday, the 19th of Zulkada 1445, corresponding with the English day 28th of May 2024. Hazrat Wala is saying that Quran Karim Mu'minana Akhlaq Kasar Chashma hai. That the Quran Majid is the fountainhead of the akhlaq of the believing people and the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is those waves of life in the life of a mu'min the lives of the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum their ibadat their mu'amalat their ma'mulat their aqwal their af'al what we mean the acts of worship their dealings their trade transactions their verbal uh, their speech and their doings all of that there is completely uh, green and lush because of these waves from the akhlaq and the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this akhlaq e hasana, these, uh, this good character that has reached us, it has not reached us by any other means other than these great sacred personalities which we mean the Sahaba Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alayhim and this year was the maqsad and the mansha of Islam from the very first day that the people of Iman in every era in every country they would come and they would color themselves by means of the teachings of the Quran and Majid and the sublime character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they would embellish themselves Hazrat Wala is speaking about uh, the Urdu the high level of it and the way it is presented. Now that sweetness can only be understood if we read the actual Urdu there. How much of justice can we do when I am translating it now? Hazardwala is also emphasizing that every time a new kitab comes, we should go through it so you will be able to understand something on what level was the kitab written, etc. So the Quran, and we're speaking about akhlaq e hasana. Hazrat Wala is saying, at tasawuf huwa al akhlaq. You want to know about tasawuf? Tasawuf is character, akhlaq. People would come to the khanka of Hazrat Tanwi rahmatullah alayhi, and they would come about and just start doing their wazifas, awrads, and this and that. And then he would go on to say to them, that, but tell me who told you to do this wazifa? Who asked you to read this, that, or the other? It is greatly possible that I was going to tell you to do something else. So he would remind them again about the importance of akhlaq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is on the highest level of uh, character. In one hadith, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, Bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al-akhlaq I have been sent so that I can perfect and bring to completion makarim al-akhlaq sublime character. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of bringing into our lives the akhlaq and nabawi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so that we can seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Wala is speaking about the days, the old days in Fatapur, where Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib made a lot of mehnat on his kitab, the Wasiyatul Akhlaq. In fact, it was uh, very thick and voluminous, and after that, the, the concise version of it came out in the form of a, a risala that who will read it? Now we need to go through these kitabs so that we can understand the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need to read about the kitabs that tell us about the life, the akhlaq of the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. Nevertheless, after collecting and putting together this kitab, Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah sahab then used to give it to me and say, now read it to the people, read it out. This akhlaq we are talking about. The foundation of this work of ours is based on three principles, fundamentals. Kitabullah, wa sunnat rasul wa sirat salaf It is the Qur'an, the hadith. But to understand the Qur'an and hadith, we would most definitely have to peep and look into the lives of the, seer, the, the pious predecessors. Then we'll be able to understand how they lived Qur'an and hadith. You know, I never ever left out the discourses of Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib. I was always present there. And on some occasion, I must have come late or missed one majlis. And I said to Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, when he asked me about my absence, I said to him that, listen, Garme se, at home, my wife, I, I was seeing to her as she's not well, etc. But on that occasion even, he had to go and he went to this extent of saying to me that listen, that's in its place, it's my daughter, I'll be greatly pleased if you tend and see to her. However, this ilmi nuqsan, this harm that is coming in your progress of knowledge, etc., I cannot tolerate that. Now here, yeah, look at the Urdu here. Yeah. But today we don't even understand our Urdu. We're too busy in doing BA and MA, etc. Simple Urdu we cannot understand. We have adopted and we have in, uh, uh, inclining to the languages of Ghair. But our own language we can't understand. So today so many times you would find that we are turning our attention to Wazaif. But... That also, some, and just that amount. But there is no attention being paid to that of akhlaq. So the Qur'an Majid is that of hidayat and showing us success and it is the fountain of all of this year and showing us barakat and hasanat. How do we do good? So wherever aqaid and ibadat and mu'amalat are mentioned side by side, the importance of akhlaq has been also emphasized. Now there is so many, so many different ayat of the quran e majid that are related Regarding Akhlaq Now just to quote a few of these ayat Allah Ta'ala says خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ In this particular ayat, Allah Ta'ala is speaking about good character. What is Allah Ta'ala saying? Allah Ta'ala is saying, adopt forgiveness, meaning overlook the harm that your enemies do to you. وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ Instruct what is right, meaning order others to do what is right. 
وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ and ignore, shun the ignorant ones because it is futile to argue with such people. Now is that not teaching us uh, akhlaq? So much is mentioned just in that. Mafi ko ikhtiyar kije or neki ka hukam di dije or jahilo se eras kije. In another ayat, Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu in ja akum fa siqum binaba in fatabayanu kabl fatabayanu an tusibu kaumam bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma faaltum nadimin. Now that is an ayat of Surah Hujurat in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that oh who you, you who have iman if any sinner or anyone else brings any news to you then verify it. I mean you heard something somebody came to you and they saying someone said this about you. In the meantime you pick up your uh, baton you pick up your stick and you rush towards that person and maybe even causing him harm without verifying anything that did that person even do this, say this, what is going on? Oh, you who have Iman, if any sinner or anyone else brings you any news, then verify it, investigate it to establish the truth of it, lest you should harm any nation or any person unknowingly because of being misinformed and then become remorseful, regretful over your actions. In this manner, false news will be nipped in the bud. False news will be nipped in the bud if you ascertain first, investigate, go out to see, listen, what actually happened. You're just not spontaneous and in a rush and you go and you cause harm. In another verse, Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. La yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa ay yakunu khayram minhum. O you who have iman, men should not mock, scoff other men. For perchance, perhaps those mocked may be better than those who mock. You're mocking at them, but it is greatly possible that they are better than you. وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِّن نِسَاءٍ عَسَىٰ أَن يَكُنَّ خَيْرًا مِّنْهُنْ Neither should any woman mock other woman. Perchance, they, the mocked ones, may be better than them, meaning those who mock. وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ Never find faults with yourselves. Meaning, with other Muslims. وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Never find faults with yourselves, with other Muslims. وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ And do not call each other by derogatory and insulting names. بِئْسَ لِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ The name of sin to the name of sin after Iman is indeed evil meaning to be referred to as a person who commits a particular sin after Iman is uh, indeed evil those who do not repent are indeed oppressors Oppressors of their own selves because they will be subjecting themselves to punishment. On one occasion, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was asked. She was asked that Ma kana nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yasna'u fi baytihi that listen what would Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do in his private capacity, in his house, behind the doors and the curtains, at home, what, was, what would he do? Qalat, she said, Kana yakunu fi mihnati ahlihi ta'ni khidmata ahlihi fa idha hadaratis salatu kharajat ila salat. 
that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be occupied and engaged in serving his family. The moment Salat time would arrive, he would leave for Salat. Hazrat Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala an relates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed the Sahaba saying, Ittaqillaha haythuma kunta, fear Allah wherever you may be, wa adbi'is sayyat al hasanata tamhuha, and follow up a sin with a good deed. It would erase that sin, wa khaliqin nas bi khuluqin hasan, and treat people, come about with them, present to them good character. Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ That do good, verily Allah Ta'ala loves the doers of good. Allah Ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah loves the patient ones. Hazrat Usama ibn Sharik relates that kunna julusan عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم we were seated with Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم كأن على رؤوسنا الطير as if birds were perched upon our heads ما يتكلم منا متكلم in such a way that nobody would utter one word. There was absolute, total silence. There was no movement as if birds were actually perched on our heads. فَقَالُوا Then, إِذْ جَاءَ نَاسٌ When some people came and then they asked, مَنْ أَحَبُّ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ That who are the most beloved servants to Allah, of Allah, who are the most beloved servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who are most beloved to Him? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ahsanuhum khuluqa Those who are the best in character. Hazrat Jabir radiallahu ta'ala narrates, Inna min ahabbikum ilallahi wa aqrabikum minni majlisan yawm al-qiyama ahasinukum akhlaqan The most close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the closest to me on the day of Qiyamah will be the ones who possess the best character. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked regarding that amal by means of which people will enter into Jannah in abundance. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Taqwa Allah wa husnul khulq The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and good character. People would write regarding their ahwal and their spiritual states. They would write so much in, in that letter about their wazaif. Right in the end, Hazrat Tanwi, in fact Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib's andaz was also like this. He would put a line over that and he would say, Okay, I understood the top, but tell me, what is the condition of your akhlaq? Trying to shift their attention more towards that of akhlaq, wazaif and awrad is in its place, but the importance of akhlaq. So here, I mean, what is namima? What is this called? I mean, the dictionary meaning you would understand it, or in the terminology you would translate it this way, that naqlul kalam ilal ghair ala wajhil ifsad, that when you take speech or kalam from this side to that side, with the intention of causing mischief. You know, Hazrat Marana Shah was Siyullah Sahib would come into the majlis and then he would say, bring the kitab. Or he would just say one word. I would stand up, go to the shelves, open up that kitab and to the right page. And people in Bombay, they were absolutely amazed. They would say, now, tell me, is this all orchestrated? Does Hazrat tell you from before time which kitab he's reading from? And how do you know that? But I would write and I would see exactly that every kitab that Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to pick up, which mazameen he used to talk about. I used to note that down and I would understand that on a certain occasion that he wants to talk about this and that and the other due to which I would then produce that kitab with that page number etc. But now all of this year, 
we need to bring into our lives, but we have to do something from our side. Kamyabi, you want success? Kamyabi to kam se hogi. You would have to do something from your side. Na ke husne kalam se hogi. It's not just with sweet, sweet talks. Zikr ki iltizam se hogi. Fikr ki ihtimam se hogi. It is when you are punctual with your zikr and you have uh, attached importance. You got ihtimam for uh, uh, for your islah. Fikr islah. You know, people would come, sometimes they would say, are you making tilawat? What tilawat are you making? What's the benefit of it? You don't even understand what you're reading. Now we understand, I mean, normally what we say, of course, there is great reward in reciting the Quran. But sometimes, Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib would go on to say that at least understand something from the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hada maktub Rabbil Alameen. Imam Ghazali has to say about the Quran and Majid that this is the letter of Allah. The nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer of all the worlds. This is his letter to humanity. How a person looks at the letter of his near and dear one, how he reads it so carefully and tries to read between the lines and what is actually meant to be said. We don't even know. I mean, all this of akhlaq. I am quoting ayat of the Quran Majid. It is regarding akhlaq. Do we even know anything about this year? So people would come there to the khanka and they would start with their wazifas. And Hazrat Tanwi would say, But why did you start off with these wazifas? Perhaps I would want to tell you something else to do this or that or the other. You should have asked me first, trying to put deep down into the hearts of the people the importance of akhlaq. Now let us make dua. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina wa akhta'na. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala alladheena min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bih. واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم بحرمة سيد النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم